When running a business, you need to know how to record revenue accurately. But if you're new to managing finances, knowing how to do it right can be tricky. In this video, we'll talk you through the two different ways of recording payments, accrued and deferred revenue. We'll show you how to identify deferred or accrued revenue in your business and how to accurately record it in your financial records. Let's get to it. Accrued revenue is money that you're owed for a product or service that you've already provided. This means you record the payment at the point of sale, even even if the money isn't in your bank account yet. Let's use an example to demonstrate how it works. Imagine that you're in charge of an email marketing software. Customers use it to manage all of their email campaigns. They pay a monthly fee for the base plan. After using the software for a few months, some customers decide they'd like some advanced scheduling features to up their marketing game. So they log into their account and add some advanced features to their subscription. They get instant access to these features. They can start scheduling more emails, segmenting their audience and more. But even though they have access to those features, they don't pay for them immediately. In fact, they won't pay for them until their next monthly payment. During this time, you record these add-ons as accrued revenue. When you receive the money at the end of the month, it becomes realized revenue. What is deferred revenue? Deferred revenue is when customers pay for a product or service that they haven't received yet. Instead of recording the funds as revenue, Revenue, it's added to the balance sheet as deferred revenue. When you deliver the product or service, you can then record it as actual revenue. Deferred revenue is also classed as a liability on your balance sheet. If you're unable to deliver what the customer has paid for, you may owe the money back. So even though the customer has placed an order and sent their money, it doesn't mean you'll get to keep it. Booking a flight is a great example of how deferred revenue works. Let's say you work for an online provider. When a customer books a flight, their money goes straight to your bank account. But because their flight isn't until next month, you record the money as deferred revenue. When they take their flight next month, you can then move the funds from your balance sheet to your income statement. This is where it becomes actual revenue. Now, let's use another scenario. You have to cancel the flight due to emergency repairs to the plane. In this situation, the customer doesn't get the service they paid for, so you have to send the money back. This is why deferred revenue is considered a liability. Although you have the money, you can only claim it after providing the flight. Until that point, the funds could be returned to the customer. How to record accrued revenue versus deferred revenue to better manage your finances. At this stage, you already know the key difference between accrued and deferred revenue. Accrued revenue is recognized before the funds are received, while deferred revenue is the upfront payment before a product or service is delivered. Now, let's take a look at how to record each payment. We'll start with accrued revenue. Accrued revenue is a double entry method of accounting. This means any accrued revenue payment is recorded in two different ways. The first is on your balance sheet as an adjusting journal entry. The second is on your income statement as earned revenue. Let's look at how to record accrued revenue on your balance sheet first. A balance sheet is a statement that outlines your assets and liabilities. Anything added to your balance sheet doesn't impact your income statement. Here's an example to break it down. Imagine that you're a website developer. A business owner approaches you to design their new website. You start work at the beginning of April and finish the website by the end of the month. The client is happy with your work. Good job. And they're ready to pay but you've got a pretty full schedule, so you don't raise the invoice until mid-May. So you've done the work, but the client hasn't paid yet. Now, how do you record this payment? At the end of April, you post an adjusting journal entry to your balance sheet. This is accrual accounting, which means that you record income when the work took place, not when you receive the payment. It helps you keep better tabs on your cash flow and outstanding payments. Here's how this looks on your balance sheet. Accrued revenue is recorded as a debit, which means it's an asset. Why? Because you've already provided the goods or service. Now, how does this work on your income statement? You've added $600 of accrued revenue to your balance sheet. To balance your accounts, you now need to credit your income statement with the same amount. This is recorded as earned revenue. Here's how that looks. What about accounts receivable? Accounts receivable is a sub ledger that tracks 
all of your outstanding payments. As soon as you raise an invoice for your work, you record the funds as a debit to your accounts receivable ledger. So let's fast forward to May. You create the sales invoice for your web design work and the client has 14 days to pay the balance. After sending the invoice, you debit your accounts receivable ledger by $600. You've debited the accounts receivable ledger, so you now need to credit the balance sheet. If you don't, it'll look like you have more money than you actually do. So you release the $600 of accrued revenue from a debited payment to a credited payment. At this stage, you have no more accrued revenue in your accounts. You've debited $600 and credited $600, so the account is closed. When the client settles the invoice, you can also close the account's receivable ledger. To do this, you'll credit the account's receivable ledger with $600 and record the received payment as cash. The incoming cash payment is a debit, so it also balances the earned revenue in your income statement. And that's pretty much the gist of it. Now let's take a look at how to record deferred revenue. Recording deferred revenue. Deferred revenue isn't classed as revenue until it's earned. This means you don't need to worry about adding it to your income statement. Instead, it goes into your balance sheet as a liability. After receiving the money, you can then add the funds to the income statement as revenue. We'll use an example to show you how it works. Let's say you run an online project management platform. Businesses use your software to manage their workflows organize projects and track team performance. A new customer pays $1,200 for an annual subscription. You receive the money immediately, but the customer hasn't used your service yet. At this stage, you record the payment as deferred revenue on your balance sheet. It's classed as a credit because you've already received the money. To balance your accounts, you also record the money as unearned revenue or cash. As each month passes, you can move $100 of your deferred revenue balance into your income statement. After six months, here's what the accounts will look like. This continues until the end of the subscription. At this point, the deferred revenue balance is $0 and the earned revenue is $1,200. Whoa, that was a lot of tables even for us. If you think you need more information, check out our video on deferred revenue. Hopefully this video has made it easier to understand how to record accrued and deferred revenue. And if you're still feeling a little bit overwhelmed, don't worry. You can make it even easier to manage your accrued and deferred revenue by using Chargebee. Chargebee is a subscription management platform for SaaS companies. We can help you manage your accounts and finances and scale your operations in a single location. Click the link in the video or in the description below to find out more about working with us. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more educational videos. We'll see you in the next one.